lovely beady people. It's Juliet here at Spoil Rotten Beads um, and I'm just about fed up with winter and I'm beginning to dream about summer already even though it's actually snowing here at Spoil Rotten. Let me just show you, um, I don't know if you can see if I turn the camera around see if you can guys can see, I don't know if you can see that but it's it's snowing and it's a bit grim here. So I'm cheering myself up today with a lovely summery make um, using our Brazilian cord and little Swarovski crystal charms and these great little connectors that we've got in. And I'm just gonna do a little macrame wrap, finish it off with a little macrame knot sliding clasp and some nice little beads on the end there to give it a lovely professional finish. Um, and I think these are great to make. They're very quick. Um, they're lovely on craft stalls. They're lovely little gifts. Um, you can use the little Swarovski charms in people's birthstone colours if you like. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just, as I say, dreaming of summer really. And so I'm going to cheer myself up with a lovely bright summery make here. So I'm going to make one of these macrame wrap bracelets here. This one is one I made earlier with a lotus flower connector and I've done it in lovely purple colours with a Swarovski crystal amethyst um, channel um, charm. Um, really cute and easy to make. It just uses a basic um, macrame square knotting technique. Uh, it's very neat and easy to do. It's one of those things I think in jewellery making that looks like it might be complicated but it's really not and it's actually quite quick. So I'm going to talk you through everything that I've going to be using today and then I'm just going to dive right in and show you guys how to get started. So I've got my trusty macrame board. Um, you will find life a lot easier if you grab yourself one of these. I've got two different colours of the Brazilian waxed cord and um, this Brazilian cord is super duper waxy, um, It's which is brilliant. That's what makes it so good um, because um, it means it, it's much easier to work with and it kind of just stays put as you're you, as you're as you're doing your macrame knots those knots all stay put but the moment you start wearing your piece um and even after you just finish making it you'll find that that wax just goes um so it Although it feels sticky, don't let that put you off. Um, that's the benefit of this cord. Um, and it, as I say, as soon as you start wearing your piece, and in fact, after even after you've handled it whilst you've been making your piece, you'll find that that stickiness will just disappear. This one's not sticky at all now. So I'm going to use two different colours today. Really, I'm using two different colours just so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing more easily. I think uh, if I was doing this for myself, I might just do it in one colour, but two colours works really well and it's a nice contrast as well. Um, I've got a connector here and I'm going to be using this cute pineapple connector because that's very summery and will keep me in that summer, springtime summer mood. I've got a Swarovski Channel charm here in this beautiful rose colour and a five millimeter open jump ring to attach that with. I've got two of these little um, square beads here, which have got a really good size hole, um, which means that you can actually get two strands of the, the Brazilian cord through them. And that's the other thing about the waxiness on the cord is it makes it easier to thread that cord through a bead as well because it's so waxy whilst you're using it. So. Um, I'll show you how to do that later on. So I'm going to put everything to one side um, apart from my cord and my connector. Um, so this colour here um, that I'm going to be using is called Plum and the bright pink colour here is just called Pink actually. So I've got Plum and Pink and I'm going to use the pink for the base of my wrap and the Plum is going to be the bit that I actually knot with. So I've got about a metre here of my pink cord, which I've actually already cut in half into two pieces. And what I'm going to do is take one of those pieces and fold it in half so I find the centre of my cord. And I'm going to pass that centre, that through one of the loops on my connector and then pull the tails of the cord through that loop. And that's called a lark's head knot. And that's lark's head is how you attach your cord to your connector. And I'm gonna do the same with the other piece of my cord here. 
So I'm going to go through that loop and then pull my tails of my thread through and tighten up that loop. And now my connector is attached to my cord. And now what I'm going to do is attach my cord to my macrame board. So if I just take this down, you can see what I've done is I've tucked my two pieces into one of the ridges in my macrame board at the top. And I've just done exactly the same thing at the bottom there. So now my piece is nice and secured in my board and uh, it's not gonna go anywhere and it's gonna be nice and easy to use. So um, I've actually got here um, my plum cord and I've got two meters of my plum cord and I'm going to begin my knotting here and not in this direction. So I've got one of my lengths of plum and I'm gonna pass that underneath all that pink cord here. And at this point, I'm gonna zoom my camera in so you guys can get a nice close up view of what I'm doing. But what I've done is I've, I've centered my plum cord. So that's about the center of my plum cord there. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, so if it's not exact, don't worry. Right now, let me zoom in for you guys. There we go. Get that nice and central for you. Okay, so I've got my plum cord underneath my pink cord there. And all I'm gonna do is take the cord that I've got on this side, pass it over the top here, like so. So you create like a loop. Okay, and then the cord that's on the other side, I'm gonna pass underneath the pink and up through that loop that we just made. Okay, and you'll create a knot that look like that. Okay, and before I pull that tight, I'm just gonna slide it down so it's nice and close up against that connector like so. And that is half of a square knot. To do the other half, you just repeat the same thing, but on the other side. So on this side now, I'm creating a loop. And then I'm gonna take this piece of cord here and pass it underneath the pink and up through the loop that I just made. And I'm gonna pull that tight. And that is the other half of my square knot. If I bring that up to the camera, you guys can see that is now a square knot. So all I need to do to make this bracelet is to continue with those square knots. So now I'm back to this side again, creating a loop like so, taking this cord here, I'm gonna pass it underneath the, the pink core cords there and up through that loop of the plum cord there and pull tight. And do the same on the other side. Always repeat it from one side to another. Make that loop, take this cord under and up through that loop. And that will create that square knot like so. So I'm just gonna continue doing that now. If I, as I said, I'm swapping sides each time. If you only do it on one side, you'll get a nice twisted effect. So if you don't swap your sides as you make those square knots, you'll end up with a twisted effect, which is also very, very pretty. But I want this, just this nice flat square knot here. So I'm gonna continue with the square knots until my, this half of my bracelet is long enough. And then I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. Just a note on the length of my piece here. This is where these macrame boards are brilliant. If I just zoom back out, you'll see that they've got these inch markers down the side here. So if I were to take the end of my, of my connector, my pineapple connector, I'm gonna take it down to this point here, this line here. I can now use these inch markers and these half inch markers to measure this half of my bracelet. And so my 
my connector is just over an inch long, I want my finished piece to be about seven inches long. So that really means that um, I actually only need about to do about two and a half inches of knotting um, on each side of my piece in order to make my finished bracelet measure approximately seven inches. So as I say, I'm gonna continue with my knotting and I'm gonna do the other side as well. I'm gonna come back to you when I have done all of my knots and I'm gonna show you guys how to create that sliding clasp like the one that is on here, which as you can see sort of slides open and you can pull closed and open. So I'm gonna just show you how to do that and how to attach your little beads, how to seal the ends of your cord and just pop on the charm there to the piece. Okay, so I have made all my lovely knots all the way down both sides of my piece there. Um, and um, I've trimmed off my little tails of thread. Um, and so that I've just got about sort of three millimeters um, either side. And this is where my handy cat um, <laughs> cigarette lighter comes in handy. And to seal these ends off, all I'm gonna do is just melt them with the lighter and push that little melted end down against the rest of my work. I'll do that again for you. Push that melted end down. Um, just be careful, obviously, not to burn yourself um, when you're doing this, um, but you're just literally just melting the ends of that thread um, just so that it seals nicely there. And I'll do it on the other side there. You see, I'm just melting it and then just giving it a push down. If you're like me and you've done lots of cooking, uh, then you've probably got asbestos fingers, as I call them. And uh, you won't burn yourself, but just do be careful, obviously. I'm just melting it. If it's not melted quite enough, then burn it a little bit more. Just give it a push down. And if I just zoom the camera in, hopefully you guys can see that that has sealed the ends of my piece there. Um, so... That is my braiding done. And what we need to do now is to make that um, sliding knot clasp that we've got on this lovely purple one here. So to do that, I'm going to take the two ends of my pink cord and pass them one over the other like so. And then one of the tails of the purple thread, the plum colored thread that I've trimmed off um, from earlier, I'm gonna pass underneath all four of those ends of cord. And once again, I'm just gonna zoom the camera in so you guys can get a nice close up view of what I'm doing here. And I'm gonna repeat exactly what we did before when we tied the other knots. I'm gonna pass one end over that bundle of four pieces of the pink thread and then take the other side and take it underneath all of those and up through that loop that we've just made. And we're going to continue with those square knots. So that is now one square, one half of a square knot there. Pulling it tight, but not too tight. Repeat that on the other side. So make a loop, pass this thread under and up through that loop that we've just made and pull tight. And you just wanna slide that knot nice and neatly up against the other one. And that now is one square knot. And I'm just gonna repeat that three more times. I'm just going to slide my work up a bit because this is going to be a sliding knot. It's going to move around. I'm going to repeat that three more times. So I'm making my loop. I'm going to pass the other end under and up through that loop and pull that up against the rest of my work there. Do it again on the other side. Under and up. So that's two square knots now. And then one more time, I'll make the loop under and up through. Here we go. Pull tight, 
and last one make that loop under and up through and pull tight and that is my sliding clasp now so it's simply those square knots that we did right at the beginning but just over all four pieces of cord and I'll zoom back out so you can see my work um, and it looks like that um, and once more I need to seal off these ends of cord here so to do that again I'm just going to trim my cord down to about sort of about three millimeters in length and my handy cat cigarette lighter then burn that cord pat it down that's the beauty of this Brazilian cord because it is um, a, a synthetic cord it's nylon um, that's why it burns and that's why you can seal it so nicely um, just with a flame so once more other side pat it down um, and that is my sliding clasp now um, so what I want to do now is just finish off my bracelet with those square beads on the little tails of my cord because that just gives it a nice professional finish so i am um, gonna get both ends of my thread together there we go and just give them a squeeze and this is why it's so nice that they are so waxy because they kind of just stick together i can pass both ends through that square bead and I'm just going to tighten this up a little bit so shuffle it down so that that knot is in the middle and I'm happy with the length of my piece decide how long I want my little tails um, of cord to be just remember that you've got to open it out in order to get it onto your wrist so you do need to leave um, a little tail of thread so that you can open up your piece and close it again so that you can put it on easily. So just remember, don't cut them off too short. I'm gonna tie a knot here, like so, so that my bead doesn't slide off the end. And once more, I'm gonna trim off my cord so that I have got about three millimeters and seal the ends there with my flame so that it, that knot doesn't come undone. And that is one half. I'm gonna repeat that for the other half there. So just squidge the waxy cord together and you'll find you can get it through that hole a lot more easily. Um, because it's so waxy, it just sticks together, it's great. Here we go. I'm going to make sure that this one is about the same length as the other one that I made. Make my knot and trim it off. Seal it up. There we go. And there is my lovely wrap bracelet. All I want to do now to finish it is to add that little pink Swarovski crystal charm, which I just think gives it a nice finishing touch. So I've got my five millimeter open jump ring and two pairs of chain nose pliers, holding that jump ring either side of the opening, twisting it open like so. Slip the charm onto the open jump ring and then onto one of the loops on the connector and just snap that jump ring shut. And there is my lovely summary piece. And of course you can stack these up and wear them together. Um, they're really good fun. And as you can see, they're very easy to make. Um, so um, there is my little taste of summer. Um, it's cheered me up. I hope it has um, made your day too. Um, do hit that subscribe button and subscribe to our channel. And I will pop a link through to all the products that I've used on this video as well. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye-bye.